Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 150 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us on different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com, and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video you'll be alerted to it i thought of another reason why people should tune in for keto on the couch every monday why is that to see what kind of ridiculousness you are wearing to church on sundays i did wear a turkey on my head today <laughs> so there's that but yeah i got to church and i saw this thing on her head and i'm like it, Thanksgiving's not even this week. Like, Thanksgiving is next week. Can't you wait another week to wear this ridiculousness? I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I love Thanksgiving. And here's the thing. A lot of families go out of town starting next weekend. So I'll miss them all together. So Turkey Day has to start now. I knew you got some interesting comments about the turkey on your head, too. I did. There, uh, There's this one guy in church that I absolutely love, Mr. Jerry, this older gentleman. And he always says, he goes, well, look at that. There's a chicken wearing a turkey. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I may be a turkey sometimes, but I'm no chicken. Well, I was really impressed with the little five-year-old girl who showed up with a candy cane as a cane and a full Santa hat on. Now, that's my kind of girl. She skips right over Thanksgiving, and let's get into the important holiday, no, Christmas. No, we can't skip Thanksgiving. I love Thanksgiving. It's nah. just food and family and fellowship. All Thanksgiving is to me is an indication Christmas is coming. <laughs> it's like the warning shot. <laughs> that's happening. it. happening. Although now we're skipping Halloween and jumping right into Christmas. I know. I mean, all of it. It'll just be Easter and then Christmas, right? <clears throat> So after church, I ran over to uh, Whole Foods. Okay. Because Whole Foods, if you're watching this on the day we release it, which is Monday, the 20, what, what Monday is the 18th, Whole Foods, if you like Zevia's, if you are an Amazon Prime member, 40% off of Zevia. Oh, dear That makes Lord. it $3 a six pack. How many six packs did you buy? Well, we were getting kind of low. We were down to only one shelf. We we're only down to half a wall. Um, I don't know. I bought four flavors at three six packs per flavor. But I didn't buy any root beer and I didn't buy any cream soda. You should be proud of me. Wait, why did you not buy root beer? That's the only ones that I want you to buy. They didn't have any. But they had grape and Plenty of they grape. had cherry cola. Lots of grapes going on. And around. they had orange. And what's the other flavor I got? Ginger ale. So everything terrible. They're all awesome flavors. They have a plenty. But my root beer and cream soda. Nope, didn't have any. Because that that's the good ones. That's they what's also taken first. Didn't have any of the tonic water, which I love the Zevia tonic water. And I like to too. just drink Zevia tonic water. Yeah, I actually really like it too, weirdly. They didn't have any. We're going to have to go check out the other Whole Foods. But while I was there... They had something new. I knew it was out, but you couldn't get it anywhere. Okay. And we never got to try it. So if, if you like cottage cheese, we found this when we were at uh, KetoCon, the yep. Good Culture brand, and they don't have anything bad in this. There's it's like no good. carrageenan or anything like that. And pretty much you can only get the 4%. Well, they've got a new one. that Well, it was out, but you couldn't get it anywhere. Uh -huh. This is double cream cottage cheese. 6% fat. This is not going to be terrible. So the ingredients in this are organic skim milk, organic whole milk, organic cream, mm. Celtic sea salt, live and active cultures. That's it. So there's no carrageenan, no garbage, no thickeners, no anything in it. Wow. Now, the nutrition on this, there's four servings in this. I could eat that whole container. Oh, so can I. A half a cup is a serving size, 130 calories per serving. Nice. Seven grams of fat, 14 grams of protein. That is high fat for cottage yeah, cheese. Yeah, it is. Ready? Three total carbohydrates in a serving. Wow. So if I were to eat this entire container, Which I'm only eating 12 total carbs. That like is that nice. is insane. I would rather eat cottage cheese than ice cream. 
Okay, let's not get crazy. I love cottage cheese that much. But what I'm thinking is that is a nice breakfast. It is like, an awesome I, breakfast. It, I really like cottage cheese for breakfast. Well, it is a bit expensive for, you know, like what we're used to with Breakstones cottage cheese or whatever like that. But I mean, the ingredients in this are so good. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> oh, my I mean, Lord. It is just like it's going to be blown out because it's white. But just to give you an idea, look at that. Look how thick that is. That looks amazing. Uh, do you, you want the first taste? No. I'll There's have some the cream taste. on top, too. I'll take the second taste. No, I got to be nice. Now, no sweetener. We haven't put anything in this. Opened it right up. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That is so good. It's like drinking heavy cream, I was gonna but say, with a texture. It's like heavy cream, but like chewy. That is that is awesome? Good. I'm like so excited they got this. I bought four of them because the expiration date was like December 15th. And I'm like, I will eat all four of them by then. I, I will totally eat. I'm, I'm going to need, I'm going to need another hit. What's nice about this, mm. sometimes the end of the day, I just want a little something. Mm -hmm. I don't want the ice cream because it's got the sugar alcohols in it. Right. I don't want a bunch of junk. So I can have one serving of this. It'll satisfy me as super a snack. Rich. It's super rich. It's only 130 calories. It's only three total carbs. I'm not worrying about any of the garbage or any of that kind of stuff. That is nice. That, I mean, I'm thinking that and a couple of like peely nuts. I mean. You can even, sometimes I'll put a couple of drops of stevia in it or, or even the monk fruit. But yeah, mix it with a couple of nuts or, oh yeah. Drink even, it with a, with a Zevia root beer. <laughs> Sorry. But I got the important stuff. I got the grape. The grape was important. So, <laughs> to Dimatop lovers. So what else did we do this week? I went and got glasses. You did. And I loved everybody's feedback on your glasses. Of like, course, we didn't get any of the glasses that you guys voted on. Because when we went to Walmart, which is where I got my eyes checked, uh, the guy sits down. He goes, we got great prices on lenses. And I'm like, okay. And he gives me like the price on the best lens, but we haven't put any of the coatings on it. Just like the best lens with uh, an anti-scratch coating, but no UV yet, none of that stuff yet. And he's like, and the price of the lens is $278. I'm like, um, it's not with the frame. I go, no, 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 the frame's extra, which was like another 120. Right. The glasses were like $430 and I haven't put anything on them yet. But what we did was we took what you guys voted for, which was like number one and number four were like the most popular ones. And we took the picture of that and went and got glasses that looked like them at BJ's. Yeah, we got some good glasses at BJ's. But now, now here, if you guys buy glasses and mm -hmm. you go to BJ's, Here's the little thing. So we go in and I'm like, okay, I looked it up online. Who's got the better deal, BJ's or Costco? Right. BJ's is doing 50% off of the lenses. So you're going to buy the frames full price. And their frames really aren't super expensive. It's like $119. Yeah, and we got nicer frames. Mm -hmm. And then the lenses are 50% off. So she goes through and we're getting, well, now I need, I have to wear progressives. And so... I want to, I do want to get the better ones because of like my, I want a better field of vision, a field yeah. of view and that kind of stuff. So we're getting the good, the good uh, scratch protection. I'm getting the blue light protection on it, which is really important prone. to me. And um, so we're getting all this stuff. And then she's like, do you want the transitions? I'm like, eh, I don't know. Like it we're And we don't even really know how much it is. She's like, listen, I can do the transitions for $40 now. And they're only like you could do all kinds of colors now. It's not just like brown or gray or something like now that. Now you have uh, Joe's attention. If he can have like fluorescent green. If I could make it look like a pair of sunglasses. So she's so anyway, we go in and she figures it all out and she was like, okay, so with your frame, your glasses are gonna be like three hundred and ten dollars. And I'm like on the floor. I'm like, are you kidding me? Three hundred and ten dollars. Now I know I've waited like seven years to update my prescription. But my feeling is like it's your eyes. You need these. Let's do this. And the thing is, is I don't even have a bad like vision. Like I can see very well without glasses, except for reading. I can't see reading, but that's just an old person thing. But what she said, what I have a very light prescription. My prescription is really 
um, working on my stigmatism. Yeah. And so the thing is, is, even with glasses, sometimes I can't like focus really well, but you have to blink a few times because the stigmatism will twist and turn and that kind of stuff. But as we all know, Joe rarely blinks. <laughs> So, but it's not like Caleb's thing where you like, if you could be standing three feet in front of you and there's like eight of you there. Yeah, no. And he thinks you're looking at your butt when he's really looking at your head. Yeah. So, so it's not that kind of prescription. He ever thought he's looking at my butt? I don't know, but he said, you said he, he thought the he was back. looking at the front of your head and yeah. he was really looking at the back. So, but, th but that's still my head. Like, well, I don't know. Do I look like a butt head? So, anyway, I don't have a bad prescription. So, she goes, oh, by the way, because the doctor was nice enough to give me a second prescription for just sitting at the computer, like an intermediate one. Because, you know, again, with the, you know, progressives, you've got the middle is what's going to look at the computer. And, like, sometimes I have to kind of do that to find oh, it. That would so she's like, let's me. just give you one of just for the intermediate, perfect for the computer. And I'll make the very, very bottom reading so that if you're, like, typing something... You can kind of just like glance. No, well, then I can just be kind of looking up and look down with my eyes to read. Like if I have something that I'm trying to copy, you know, onto the computer. I'm like, perfect. So then the girl goes in Costco. Well, you know, you can do the second pair and it's going to be 40% off. I'm like, okay. You're you right. picked out a nice set of frames. I'm like, well, if that's the case, we're just going to go online to like the Zenny Optical for the, the intermediate one because right. I don't need all the fancy for outside. And we're going to get a second pair of good glasses because I'm accident prone and sometimes I break. Sometimes I lose my glasses. Like, yes, they're but, put down in a room and I don't remember where I put them. Right. So, and, I mean, and you need the ones that like with the scratch preventive because you're always like taking them on and off. And work and everything else. Yeah. So she figures it all out. Rachel picks out a nice set of lenses and we're going to, and Rachel says to me like, let's treat you, get the, you know, transitions, the really good ones. And cause she's like, oh, we can get them really cheap and stuff. And the woman goes, okay, the second pair is $320. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This was the same size frame. I've got the same lenses. I've got the same everything. Shouldn't it be 40% off? Right. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. The first pair is $330 because you got 50% off of the lens. The lens is actually like 450 bucks. So you're Jeez. only paying like $210 for the lens. I'm like, okay. She's like, but when we do the 40% off on the second pair, you're paying full price for the lens. I'm like, so I'm wow. saving all of 10 bucks. Yeah. I'm like, I feel a little scammed here. Yeah. <laughs> So she's like, let me see what I can do. And she ended up taking 20% off of the whole package. That's nice. But yeah, so be careful when you go there. They're going to trick you into this 40% off of the second pair, but you're paying full price on the lenses. So the only way it really is going to save you a bunch of money to do that second pair is if you're getting the cheapest possible lens and you maybe single vision because now you're getting 40% off of the frames. Oh, okay. But other than that, it wasn't worth it. It really wasn't Sheesh. worth it. it but yeah. Like you're in a chess match all the time with some of this stuff. So that was the next thing. So this was the week of arguing with everybody. Right. So we've had direct TV slash AT&T and we've talked about how much we hate AT&T's internet. It's, it's stinky. It never goes down, but it's super <laughs> slow. And sometimes during the day, it's faster than others. But it never disconnects where we have no internet at all. I Thank will give them that. the Lord for that. But it just wasn't great service. Yeah. So we decided, I got a thing in the mail last Tuesday saying Comcast, who I despise even more, because they have horrible customer service. Right. Uh, great service. Horrible customer service. And the service is good when it's working. But when it's not working, we'll see it in two weeks. Right. Which is why we left them. So we get this thing, gigabit internet service. I'm like, oh, yes. Gigabit. Awesome. Call them up. We're going to put it in on Friday. They come in. They put it in. And I, the girl says to me, listen, I'm going to give you a great deal on TV because we were just going to cut the cord and just buy a couple of channels. She's like, you're only going to pay $20 more for like 130 channels. Now like, you have my attention. So you have my attention, right? $20 more because there's certain channels we want to watch. Like I like a &E, and we like the History Channel and like National Geographic Channel. Turner Classic Movies. Turner Classic Movies. So 
We're like, okay. And she's like, you don't even need a cable. I'm like, well, what about the cable boxes? That's where they get you. The $5, $10, $20 each rental round. on each box. She's like, you don't need any. You have Apple TVs. There's an app. And all you're going to do is download that app. And then you can watch everything. And you even get a DVR. Oh, okay. Nice. So I'm like, perfect. So they come and they install it on Friday. Everything is awesome. And it's like perfect timing. God protecting us. God looking out for us. Because Friday night at 9 o'clock, I get my DirecTV slash AT&T internet bill. And my internet slash DirecTV is going up from $120 to $290 a month. And we're like... I'm like, what? What just happened? They're like, oh yeah, your contract's expired. I call up on Saturday. I cancel DirecTV. No issues like that. I go to turn on the cable. There is no app on the Apple TV for Comcast. That's going to be a problem. So now I'm back to fighting with Comcast, which is why I left Comcast to begin with. Two and a half hours of getting sent to people in other countries. <sighs> and I don't understand. And I'm like, the girl lied to me. She said there is an app. I don't have an app. Now I can't watch TV. I'm paying for TV channels that I can't watch because I don't have a box. They're like, we'll go get a box. I'm like, I don't want it. She's like, oh, we're going to have to send somebody out to install the box for the cable line. And that's going to cost you $70. And I'm like, but you just charged me $70 for the installation. So now I got to pay a second installation because you screwed up the first time. So long story short. Too late. Four hours later of phone calls, we got them to waive all of the installation fees and 12 months of our box for free. So I don't know if you realized it or not, but somehow in our vows when we got married, I snuck in a little clause that says that all customer service calls that take like two hours or longer, like that's on you. That's part of your like husband responsibility. I feel like I accepted those vows, even yeah. though I don't ever remember hearing them. No, I snuck them in there. Yeah, because I think I'm already doing all of these, not only for us, but I end up having to do them for like your mother, my mother, my, my mother bought a car. I had to negotiate with the car dealer in New York over the phone down here. Because I just can't do it. At one point- You cry. I do, I cry. I also can't do um, timeshares. We've decided that. Like, I can't do a timeshare thing. Okay, wait, wait. We have to tell this story. Okay. So, I, was it our honeymoon? No, it wasn't our honeymoon. It was like about a year later, we were using the rest of our honeymoon tickets. We went to Disney, and the hotel we're staying at was like, if you come listen to our timeshare spiel, it was like a, too good of a deal to turn up, right? It was like, $200. It was like a ridiculous amount of money. It was a good enough amount of to get us to go listen to it for me to show up. So we sit through their whole spiel and it actually is a good thing, but we're just not interested in timeshares. They they really did have like some good deals at this particular place. It was like a vacation one. Yeah. So we listen to the whole thing and we say to him like, yeah, we're just, you know, first of all, we never ever make spontaneous decisions. And that wasn't a lie. No. It wasn't a way to get out of like no. what we were talking we to them to about. We need to go home and pray about this and really consider it, you know, have a conversation about this. But yeah. And I mean, honestly, we don't really take a lot of vacations. So right. it wasn't, a, we knew it wasn't going to be a good thing for us ultimately. Because we don't go on vacation. But, um, but we don't make a big financial decision without praying about it. Right. And so we, we said, we're going to go home. We have to really pray about this. And honestly, we hadn't even said in our mind completely no, because there was, it was some good, it was very, very inexpensive. They did not like but that answer. They did not like the answer. They're like, what do you mean you have to go home and pray about it? And like, we don't make financial decisions on the fly. I mean... I just bought a new computer. It took me three days to like investigate the computer. And then the day after I bought my new computer, Apple released a new one. That's yeah. another whole story. We don't make decisions like on the fly like that. And we said, and they would not take no for an answer. An hour and a half later, we're like, can you just sign off? We sat through. No, no, no. We got to bring in somebody else. When we left, Rachel was crying. Sobbing. Sobbing. She's like, I don't even want to go to the park anymore. They've hurt my feelings so my much. My stomach was upset. It was like terrible. They're like saying, you guys are lying. Nobody like would pray about this decision. I mean, it's like it was horrible. Like, I mean, I've heard about like, 
people being a hard seller, but like that was crazy. Yeah. So ever since then, I am responsible for dealing with all customer service, even returns at the store. But some of those holds that you were on were so long that they actually allowed him to pick the music that he wanted to listen to on hold. It was like for reggae, press one. For country, press two. For death metal, press three. I was like, how long do they think you're gonna be on this hold? Well, that is Apple. And the funny part is, is I'm rarely on hold with Apple very long when I call Apple. It's usually within two or Picking three minutes. Picking your hold music. It's better than the companies that tell you, hey, this hold is gonna be so long. Just punch in your phone number. We're gonna hold your your spot in the I queue and we're that. gonna call you back. I don't believe it. I think you're not gonna call me back. This is a scam to get me off the phone. I know they're gonna call me back. My problem is, is like we have Sprint and it's kind of spotty sometimes and I'm always worried that I'm gonna miss the phone call when they call me back. Now I gotta start it all over again. Oh, and that's a nightmare. So I did wanna say I'm wearing my jacket because it's freezing. It got cold. It's like 68 degrees. I'm so excited. It was so funny. We were at church today and everybody is outside in ski hats and gloves. It was adorable. And they're bundled up and the parking team is like hanging out in the building. It's 68 degrees outside. I know, but that's super cold for South Florida. And I absolutely loved seeing all the kiddos bundled up in their winter wear for this little sweater weather day. All I know is I'm opening the windows as soon as we are done. And I'm very- And the air conditioner is already off. And I'm very excited that we actually have windows in our house that are like able to that be That we can open them. Because we used to have those crank jealousy windows and half of them didn't work. So I had them screwed shut. Yeah, which is super <laughs> safe, super <laughs> safe. Hey, I didn't turn on the heat. I wanted to turn on the heat, not because I want to get warm, but See, here in Florida, we don't ever use our heat. So as soon as you turn it on, it's like burning hair smell all through the house. There's lots of like dust and stuff in the unit. So once a year, I turn it on to burn all that crud out. It's but disgusting. I get yelled at when I do it. I can't stand that smell. Do, do you guys experience that when you first turn the heat on for the season, that like burnt hair smell? Well, ours is because we have an electric heater. It's an electric heat pump. Oh, it's gross. You have mail over there? I do. We we got mail. We got mail from Mama Cox. Shout out to Mama Cox. She said, uh, thank you both for all that you do. And she actually sent us the most adorable ornaments. I don't know if I saw this one. For a subscriber Christmas tree. I like the box. I know. This box that is That box like, is like awesome. Look at how cute that is. Look at this. It's measuring spoons. Oh, those are awesome. Are those adorable? Look at those that. Those are awesome. And they're all glittery. They're so, so cute. Thank you, Miss Mama Cox. Thank you Mama very Cox. much. So if you're new to our channel, we are going to be doing a subscriber Christmas tree. December 5th, I want to say. December 5th. It's we're going Thursday. to do a live stream. It's a Thursday. We're going to decorate our Christmas tree. And our Christmas tree is only getting decorated with ornaments that you guys send in. So our address is linked down in the description below. And you can send anything. It could be like just a, a coloring page that you colored. It doesn't yep. have to be an expensive ornament or anything like no. that. No. Just we thought it would be kind of fun to it decorate to under this your way. Arm. Well, so that is the first thing. But then also talk about Christmas. Some people have been mentioning on our Facebook that like, hey, what kind of Black Friday deals for keto stuff are coming out? Yeah. So as we find them out, we're going to let you guys know. And we'll also make a post on our Facebook family group. So mm -hmm. make sure you go check that out. We'll also put it on our regular Facebook page. Okay. But I do have, I have this turned around the wrong way. A couple of, ooh, I just saw a super coffee text I was message. Say I just... What was that? Wait a second. Stop. Pause. Super coffee. The hype is real. Cold brew and triple shop shot are arriving tomorrow. We're giving you exclusive access to grab them. Ooh. Ooh what is that? Black coffee. Triple shot. I we may have to go look at that. Okay, we, let's get back to the we're other We're going to have to grab some of that. We're going to have to grab some of that. I think my other stuff is being delivered tomorrow. My super mint, my chocolate mint super coffee. I at least want a sip of that. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, so here are the deals that I know of so far with companies that we're affiliates of. Mm -hmm. And even whether we're affiliates or not, we're going to let you know. FBOM, Tuesday, not this Tuesday, next Tuesday. Tuesday to Thursday at 6 p.m., they're doing 20% off of everything. 
Wow. And then the first hundred orders get a free pack of F bomb oils. <gasps> oh, so wow. it's like their their C ten, C eight oil. Yeah. I will leave this all down in the description below along with links. We are uh, affiliates with F bomb, so if you use that, we do get a little bit of money. We greatly appreciate that. Thank you. Then on Thursday, Thanksgiving, they're doing twenty percent off of everything. And all of their oils are $9.99. The normal price is $25. Wow. And all of their F-bomb bundles will be 25 to 35% off. Dang. Then on Cyber Monday, buy two, get one 50% off on everything. And then buy three, get one free. So those are the deals on Monday. Nice. Perfect Keto. I'm giving you guys this one early. Perfect Keto for Black Friday. Build your own bundle. Buy one item, 20% off. Buy two items, get 30% off. Buy three items, get 40% off. And if you buy five or more items, you get 50% off. 50% off the whole order? 50% off. You build your own bundle. And what we'll do is we'll put together a couple of our own bundles and let what you guys we, know what we would get. Yeah, what we'll we We'll do that get. next week. Uh, and the last one that I know about is Keto Bars. Keto Bars, who never has sales. That's yeah. the original Keto Bar with John. Um, well, I'll put a link for that one over here. Um, keto bars is doing, you get 12 bars for the price of 10. Now their bars are already priced cheap and they never do sales. They never have sales. They don't even do coupon codes. No. So 12 bars for the price of 10. So that's good a deal. That is good. Finally, can I have your phone for your Instagram? Okay. Um, I got a message from Goody Beats and he wanted us to pass along cause we're going to participate in this. What they're doing is they're going to have, because the holidays are coming up, I'm actually just going to read this. They're doing a Thanksgiving challenge with Keto Coach. And it is going to be get back into ketosis from December 2nd to December 6th. They're going to call it the ketosis holiday challenge. And what they're going to do is you're going to post why you're thankful for keto. Aww. Along with a picture of your ketone reading All for right. that whole week. And they're not expecting people to be in ketosis because they're figuring people are going to kind of binge a little bit too much on Thanksgiving weekend. So the goal is, can you get back into ketosis by December 5th, which happens to be our Christmas tree trim party. Aww. So I, that's why I told them we will absolutely participate in this. Yes. And they're going to have some awesome prizes, including um, some Keto Coach apparel. And so they're announcing that today, the day that you're seeing it, November 18th is when they're announcing it. So I figured this would be a good time for us to join yes. in with it. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. So along with that, starting on December 1st, yes. right, we are doing the 12 days of keto giveaway here yeah. on our channel. Yay! We're going to go live every day for like 20 minutes mm -hmm. with a giveaway of some of our favorite products every day. This is the products we have so far. Keto Coach. One day is going to be Nush. One day is going to be Keto Chow. One day is going to be Lolly's Granola Cookie Clusters. And that's a really, they're doing $30 gift card. Wow. Whatever you want. And you can tack on our discount code on top of that. Oh my gracious. Real Salt's participating with us. And I just heard from Perfect Keto. Perfect Keto will be participating with us. So every day, these are our favorite products that we personally use. Yay! And every day, I don't know how exactly how the giveaways are going to run yet. If we're going to do a comment or we're going to do something live, mm -hmm. we're still working that out. But just be ready for that. December 1st through December 12th, the 12 days of keto here on Two Crazy Ketos. I'm so excited. So I'm excited for that. Yeah, And we've me got too. some cool companies that are kind of jumping in with us. Yeah, this so. is exciting. So are you ready for some comments? Definitely. Okay, so if you're new to our channel, the way we do this is we ask you guys to leave comments and questions on this Keto on the Couch, and we read them on next week's Keto on the Couch. Yepers. Okay, so first one is from Julia. Hi, Julia. Julia wrote, enjoy Keto on the Couch so much, makes my Monday at work go faster, since Aww. I know I get to watch you as soon as I get home. Today at lunch, it was 46 degrees. Lucky. Wow. When I left work four hours later, it was sleeting and 30 degrees. Southwest Indiana weather. Man, so that is the opposite of Florida. Usually we get, we start off and it's like a little bit cooler, yep. but by midday, it's not getting colder, it's getting hotter. And then during the summer, it rains every day at 3 o'clock. You can set your watch by you it. You seriously can set your watch by the it. The thing down here, they say if you, in South Florida, if you don't like the weather, wait a minute. No, It'll you, change. Well, at 20 minutes. Usually yeah. wait 20 minutes. 
You know how many times we've been in the house where it's raining on the back patio and not at the front? It's sunny at the front door. Yes. It's really weird. Yes. It can be raining in your front yard and sunny in your back or vice versa. Okay. Jennifer wrote. Hey, Jennifer. I agree that having serving sizes based being consistent on nutritional labels would be a huge step in the right direction. Definitely. Did you also know that the carbs on the European labels are listed as net carbs? Crazy, wow. right? So if you do ever visit Europe, don't subtract the fiber from the carbs because they've already done that. I love watching you guys. Oh I did my... know that. I did not know that. And honestly, I prefer the American way because they're subtracting all the fibers and some of the fibers I don't want to subtract. Oh, so if it's like an IMO fiber yeah. and they're doing that subtraction for me. So there's pluses in doing it that way. You It'll help, but... You also would have to be able to know. It's the same thing here. You have to be able to know your ingredients and know, like, you shouldn't be really subtracting IMO fiber or only subtracting 50% of it. It still comes down to knowing your ingredients. But I think the number one thing I really believe the United States needs to do is have some kind of standard. It's bad enough that they can do, like, a 20% plus or minus be That's off. That's ridiculous. But just make it where everybody has to have the same serving size. Either the same serving size like Europe, like where it's 100 grams, or... Whatever the package is, that's what's on One there. One survey. Tell me, like, how many calories are in this entire package, and then I can figure it out. And it's then I'll so much easier it. that way. Well, and I think everybody divides stuff differently. Yep. Uh, James wrote. Hey, James. Joe, I thought you were in your early 40s. God bless you, Thank sir. Thank you. You totally made his day. I actually meant to because I have not shaved, though. I am not. Sh I am shaving my neck. I didn't this morning because I can't stand neck hair. But I've got my nice little beard going. But now that this is filled in, it's, I'm going to go trim up the goatee, make it all one. Then I'm going to let it all fill in like Santa Claus. I was going to say, make sure we've got like hair in here. Sometimes he's done like that Amish thing where it's just like. I used to do just like a line down. She didn't like that. The Joseph Yoder look. <laughs> he looks like a Keebler elf. I was a little sad to notice, though. This is the first time I've ever done this, and the beard is coming in white. Have you ever thought did about... Did you notice that it's coming in white? I did, just but didn't I... didn't say anything. I love you. I mean, I you don't say... You. you. don't say anything that my hair is, like, all white. But, um, have you ever thought about dyeing it? No, I'm not I mean, dyeing it. No, I don't think you need to, no. but, like, have you ever thought about I've it? I've thought about shaving off the goatee. No. Then I... you look like a baby. Yeah, well, I remember when my dad did it. My dad always had a goatee. And I just, my, growing up, and he was a chemist. He was a PhD for clinical chemistry. So he had that, like, scientist look to begin with. You mean nerd? <laughs> my sister's going to yell at you. Uh. And then, so I remember when he probably would, turned right around 50, maybe a couple years later, he, like, did trim off his goatee, shaved it off. I remember how red and raw it looked, but it did. It dropped his age by like 10 years. So maybe it's time for me to do that. No. I may do it. No. I may do it. I don't know. Let me, should I shave my beard? You no. guys let me know down in the comment section. No. Would I look younger? That's the key. I want to look younger. Everybody voted on glasses saying that makes them look younger. You would look like with no hair at all except for your eyebrow hair. Yeah, but I'm always going to have the scruff look because I hate shaving. I hate shaving for two reasons. Number one, I hate shaving. Number two, somebody uses my razor. And we will get to the bottom of who that person is. And every time I go to use it, I don't realize it. And I cut myself, especially on my head, as evidenced in the video that released today, which I did not notice this when we filmed it. I did the Quest Pizza got released today. And every time I turn my head, you can see where I had hit my head on a branch at work. And then every time I shave... I slice open the scab and it's a fresh cut. And we also have the fact that it hurts because somebody uses my razor. You would think though, after like more than a decade together that like, okay, this is the routine. Every time she sees a razor, she's using it. Like you, you need to plan ahead. I try, I hide them, you find them. I find them. I get a new one, you use that one. <laughs> And razors are expensive. I even dropped down to using the straight edge. And that was really good, except for, you do, like, you don't want to use a straight edge on your head. You do not have to worry about me borrowing that one. That thing scares me. Like, it scares me. Let's get back edge. to the comments. 
Jason wrote. Hey, Jason. It's amazing how crazy people get over fast food that is loaded with MSG. It makes you kind of think. Yeah, the Popeyes. The Popeyes, yeah. It really does make you think how people go crazy over fast food. I am not going to be dying for no sandwich. What about the fact that, remember the the Rick and Morty sauce that came out for the McDonald's chicken nuggets a couple years ago? And somebody actually sold it. They traded it for a car on OfferUp or one of those things. They traded a little sauce for a car. That's how much people went nuts over that sauce. How foolish did that? Do you think that the person who traded, like gave the car away and accepted the sauce ate the sauce? I don't know. But then a year later, they just came out with more sauce. That really gets upset. That that hurts you, right? Like if you, if you, you're like, I sold a car for this. And now you're just making it readily available. One of the best things for me about keto is the fact that since going keto, I don't eat fast food anymore because what did I, one thing I always went nuts over at this time of the year. McRib. The McRib. I would make Rachel drive all over Broward County and Palm Beach County looking for a place that had McRib. And then when I'd find it, I'd buy like 10 of them. Keto? Or not keto, I have never understood the fascination with the McRib. They're the greatest sandwich ever made by a fast food place. They're like pretend looking. They're not even like an actual, they're formed into the shape of a rib like The scary part is, has anybody ever seen the documentary on the making of the McRib? It's really scary. (laughs) Is it bad? It's pretty bad. I mean, it's really interesting how it came out. And I think... Greatest marketing plan ever by McDonald's is taking it off the market and only releasing it in certain areas of the country once a year. I mean, it makes everybody continue to want it. Because, yeah, it's like, it's an okay, I think it's better than anything else McDonald's sells, but that's not saying much. Ugh. Okay. Uh, T.C. Muller wrote, Hey, T.C. The black and tenders at Popeye's are good, but they're overpriced for what you get in my book. I got rid of my scale at home. I got obsessed with weighing and it becomes unhealthy for me. Well, welcome to No Way November. Yeah. I'm having a good time with this, honestly. I am not having a good time with it for a couple reasons. Number one, I just don't like not getting on the scale. Number two, this week, I another thing that added to my stress. So because I was so stressed, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm like way up in weight because I've been so stressed with dealing with Comcast and dealing with AT&T and dealing with all the other nonsense. Then I had the Keto uh, Chow Recipe Challenge. Okay. Which I had to come up with two recipes, one using chocolate, one using eggnog. The recipes were due in by Friday, last Friday. I, as of Thursday, still couldn't get it right. Because nothing came out the way I wanted to do. Rachel would be like, it's really out. good. And I'm like, not good enough. I'm like, She's like, it tastes good. And I'm like, but it looks like rubber. <laughs> yeah, he just was really hard on himself. But I do think I figured it out. With all of that trial and error, I mean, we went through, I don't know, how many dozen eggs. Dozens. And I, I do think that I figured out the key to baking with it. And that is doubling or even tripling baking powder when you're using it as a flour substitute. So... In the end, having to, I spent all night Thursday after our live stream and Friday coming up with these recipes. Nothing like waiting to the last minute. It I can, mean, you were cooking the whole time. It was just, it never, your breakthrough didn't come until the last minute. Right. And I guess I work well under pressure, but the amount of food that I had to taste and the amount of sugar alcohols that I was eating to make sure it tasted right, I'm afraid to see what that scale says because well, my clothes are tight. And I it's all back to the last week of figuring out like these recipe things because I was eating, I think on Friday, I literally only ate chocolate mousse, pie like a, crust. Seems like a good day to me. <laughs> so, but we are going to do videos on those recipes. We are going to do videos. I will leave a link we have on our website already is the recipes, but we haven't done a video. They came out really good. So we did a cannoli cupcake, mm-hmm. or rather rather an eggnog cupcake with a cannoli filling and icing on top. You yep. don't have to stuff it inside if you don't want it. Just use it as top. Only if All you like, eggnog flavored. Only if you like delicious things. And you can use any flavor ke- uh, keto chai you want. I had to make it with eggnog because obviously... But man, if you can do it with challenge. salted caramel. Yeah. The only thing is, is cut out the nutmeg and the cinnamon because that's making it more, you know, eggnoggy, obviously. Eggnoggy. Um, and then the other one we did 
was a chocolate. chocolate pie, a chocolate cream pie. And the chocolate cream is a cross between like a mousse and a no-bake cream cheese. It's not as light and fluffy as a mousse, but it's not as thick and dense as a cream cheese. I think it's perfect. But I'm telling you, the showstopper the is crust. the crust. I pulled that crust out of my butt. I just kept well, that mixing sounds delicious. Stuff that Chris from Keto Chow was like, cool, butt crust. Wow. But I'm telling you, that's the crust to use on all of your favorite holiday baked treats. We are going to do a video on just the crust because it's super versatile, but it is very high in fat. I used eight tablespoons of butter in one crust. And you could, it came out pretty too. It came out really nice. came out really pretty. And I think it would be great for savory stuff as well. Yeah. All you'll have to do on the savory, if you are looking at the recipe right now, it's only within the pie recipe, but I'm going to put it in its own separate recipe on the website. Um, but all you would do is cut out the erythritol and cut out the uh, vanilla and now it becomes a savory crust. And wow. The Super texture, buttery. Yeah. It was great. Rachel wrote. Hey, Rachel. It's always fun to hear your weekend review. That time change is totally messes with us all. Maybe someday it's going to change. Have a blessed week and I'll see you all soon. Oh, I can't wait. Steven wrote. Hey, Steven. Um, is it Steven Blake? It is Steven Blake. Hi, Steven Blake. It says, I'm right there with you on the time change. It gets way too dark, way too early here on the West Coast. Seriously, it messes me up. It is. It's horrible when you look outside and it's 430 and it's dark out. It I can't is. stand that. Um, although it has been nice for like my morning walks, not to like go like go backward here, but continuing with the No Way November, I I know you've had a hard time with it. But for me, it has been great because I don't have the scale to either give me permission, like, oh, you're doing great this week. Go ahead and, like, go off meal plan. And I also don't have the excuse to be like, I'm sad and frustrated because the number isn't the number that I want. So I'm just going to go off meal plan. Like, right. <laughs> either way, it doesn't usually help me out. So what I had to do is just stay on meal plan and do my exercise. That's the, the one thing I could do was control my behavior because I couldn't control getting on the scale. So I exercised every single day and it really helped to go early in the morning to go for, for my walks because it was already like getting light outside light. super, super early. I don't like it. Overprocessed wrote, Hey, overprocessed. <laughs> One advantage of living in Arizona, no daylight savings time. Yeah, we have a friend that yeah. lives there and he has he enjoyed it. it. Kevin wrote, Hey, Kevin. I have no idea what a Korean or Chinese drama is. Well, Kevin, come on over and a we lot will watch people, it together. A lot of people have come in and on our dramas. So Alice wrote, I love K-dramas. My favorite is Faith with Lee Min Ho. <gasps> okay, Alice. First of all, hey, Alice, how's it going? But yes, Lee Min Ho. Mm. I actually, my favorite, obviously, Lee Min Ho is Boys Over Flowers. Faith was really good because I really do good. like the old timey ones. Like, I didn't like, what was the one that was kind of like a crime drama, like Law and Order with him? Uh... Okay, if you hadn't said it, I would totally know it. But City. City Hunter. City Hunter. Didn't like that at all. But I do like any of the Korean dramas where they're set back in like ancient Korea. I just love them. I like the culture then and the dress and all of that. I really like that stuff. Uh, Rachel wrote. Hey, Rachel. I love it. I tell my husband I'm going to read a movie. Not Korean dramas. I watch Indian Bollywood. Oh, there you go. I've seen a couple of those movies oh, too. Oh, great. Another thing for her to start watching. But I, I don't know. I just, mm, you, I love She's them. gotten into the Chinese dramas and she's begging me. I promise I'm going to watch this one, except for it's like 50 something episodes long. And I don't have time. I mean, there's, t we used to, when I'm watching one of these, I know I'm rambling, but when I watch one of these, I want to start and finish it within two days. I would tell her like, this is too good. Keep going. 24 hours straight, Korean drama. And we have done that. We have right? done it. And with her old age, she's become a wimp and can't watch more than like two or three in a row. <gasps> We're going to have to turn off the camera and then I'm going to like hurt Joe and then we'll be right back after this. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah, see, she's watching Chinese dramas and I just can't get into them. I don't know if it's, there's something about the listening to the Korean language. I like that, but I don't I'm, know. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm not excited about a 50 episode show. 
Tia wrote, hey, Tia. my daughter has been in South Korea for a year and three months. Oh. She's teaching English as a second language. She's been trying to get me to watch some Korean crime drama. I guess I'll need to check it out now. Joe, yes. you share the same birthday as my husband. He's going to be 63. Well, happy birthday to him. Happy it's almost birthday. his birthday. Our like dream vacation is actually going to South Korea. That's like how much that. of the Korean dramas we like. Yes. Cruise Family Vibes wrote, Hey, Cruise Family. You would love my daughter. She watches all sorts of K-dramas all the time. She loves K-pop. She has little, she has black pink stuff along with BTS. She loves BTS. I had to spend over $100 for a BTS sweatshirt for her Christmas last year. Wow. Yeah, there's been a couple of dramas where they're so smart. They put in like a cute little stuffed animal or a piece of jewelry that you just is synonymous with that particular movie and you just want to get it. And we've had to buy like, well, the pig bunny. Cho had to buy me a pig bunny. Which one was that from? That was from, um, not you are beautiful. You are beautiful. And isn't that the same show that our cat is named after? Gominom. Gominom. Well, right. So anybody who watches Korean cat. drop. Yeah. We had a cat named Gominom. Yes. It was named after that. And then, your text message thing is is um with Jawisha. With Jawisha, which is uh you have a text message and that was from a Korean drama called Secret Garden. Yeah. Which was great. That was a good one too. That was a good one. Linda wrote Hey Linda. I'm watching the Koreans EXBC on Twitch. So much drama at times. I watch what they eat in a day and I watch how they spend their day. Rachel, what are you watching? Um, so the one that I am making Joe watch right now is called Endless Love, or it's also known as um, Ten Acres of Peach um, Trees, I think, something like that. But it's Endless Love on Netflix. But it's not a Korean drama. It's a Chinese drama. This is another reason that we need to cancel Netflix so we can get Disney. Rachel wrote, Hey, Rachel. Big fan of K-dramas right here. First one I ever watched was Boys Over Flowers. Yep. I was hooked after that. Current one I'm watching is Something in the Rain. I think Boys Over Flowers hooks everybody. I do, too. It's definitely one of my favorites. It's on Netflix. Yep. So if you have Netflix and you're like, man, I'd like to see, you know, check one out. Definitely Boys Start Over Flowers. Start with Boys Over Flowers. you got to get past the first episode. I was going to say, and that is usually the case. Um, if you're a K-drama fan, you know, it usually takes one to two episodes for you to like really get into it. Yeah. And then once it like builds momentum, then it's like a snowball effect. If you can get past the first episode, which is kind of a big setup yeah. in Boys Over Flowers, by the end of the second episode, you will want Hooked. to binge 26 episodes without stopping. And I actually watched uh, the something uh, in the rain, and I thought that was a really good drama too. We tried to get Anthony, his girlfriend, to watch Boys Over Flowers because we actually own it on because from before it was ever on Netflix. I'm, yeah, we used to have what was it, Drama Fever? Drama Fever. And they gave you if you subscribe to it, you got Boys Over Flowers for free. That's how we happen to have it. And they just couldn't stop laughing in the beginning, so they couldn't get past the first episode. They're like this; they couldn't get into the reading. It is it is strange if you're not used to it, but. I really feel like it helps me as a reader yeah. because you start to get really fast because you're having to read at the speed of their conversation. Right. Uh, okay. Pretty Kitty wrote. Hey, Pretty Kitty. I've seen one K-drama and I loved it so much. So cute. The most Korean thing I do is listen to K-pop and I'm trying to learn Korean and Tucker hates it. Like he says, I can play any music I want in the car. And if I'm, if I want to play K-pop, he's like, ugh. Oh, uh, this that, that that's Natalia. That's actually Beth's daughter. Oh, is that who I didn't know who that was. She is actually I think she has a different um handle on YouTube. I'll have to find what her link is, but she actually does makeup tutorials. Yes, she does. We will leave a link for that right up here on the screen. Which I need. Yeah. She's good at it too. And what is she like 18? Yes. Really good at it. And I'm in my 40s and I can't get a handle on it. <laughs> So the other Korean drama that's really, really good. Second one, if you watch Boys Over Flowers first, if you're interested in Korean dramas, number two one to watch, Goblin. Goblin, yes. I, it's got it, several names. Yes, it's like, yeah. But Goblin, you would definitely easily Anybody find Anybody would it. like Goblin. It's, 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 I think it's the second best one I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of them that I like. I mean, Rachel's a lot more into them than, than me. Me, I have to really like it to watch it. 
but Goblin, incredible. Yes. So. Sylvia wrote, Hey, Sylvia. I've never heard of Korean dramas. I love your attitude, Rachel, and approach to your exercise routine. Yes, coming up with excuses is so easy, but sticking to the plan is so much more rewarding. Do it anyway. That's my motto. Maybe some days it'll be a shorter workout or a lower impact one, but I'm committed to moving my body. I love that. That taco pie, Joe, is awesome. Even my husband likes it. I love Keto Farms. It is very hard to put that bag down once you open it. It is. It is so stinking good. And I'm so proud of you, Celia. Like, yeah, that, I think that's the goal to have. Like, I am moving today. And I mean, you, you set your goal. Like, I'll say I want to walk at least four miles a day. But, you know, if life gets in the way and you're like, hey, I can't work it in with a schedule or something. If you just say to yourself, I am moving today. I'm at least going to walk a mile. Usually after my first mile, even if I've only said in my mind, I'm I'm going to walk, it's gonna be at least a mile. Once after that first mile is done. It's easier to keep going. It's easier to keep going. Yep. So Ann wrote. Hey Ann. I can't stay away from the scale, Joe. I'm like you. Many times a day and I know that's bad. I just couldn't join you on this challenge. I had no clue that Korean dramas were a thing. I'm currently researching to see what I've been missing. You never know what you're going to learn when you watch Keto on the Couch. Serious. You two are keeping it real and keeping it fun. Yeah, I think we're going to end up like having 6,000 people start watching K-dramas. Maybe we can get Drama Fever to come back because that was like a really <laughs> sad day for me. So Drama Fever was like basically like uh, Netflix but was only – with these different dramas yeah. from all over the world. Mostly Korean though. And it was great. And I guess that they ha like went out of business. Yeah, well, you have companies like Netflix and stuff that were getting them all and it just, it, it hurt them because here you were paying, you had it for free. What they should have done is just made it a paid subscription. Yeah. Like, and we were willing to pay, it was like $30 for the year. Yeah, and we were paying for it. And here, it was like you woke up one morning and they're like, Sorry, but we've gone on business. All of a sudden, it didn't work. But what was nice about it, so the way the Korean dramas work is, for the most part, they don't do these multi-season shows. Like, we have Law & Order this season and next season. They do, like, one series. It's, like, 20 to 28 to 50 and episodes. And it's a complete story. And they put it on, like, two days, three days a week. And then, so it plays, like, for a season. Like, what we would have here from, like, say you know, September until January. Right. And then when it's over, we move on to the next drama. It's like our old fashioned mini series, yes. right? That we had years ago when we were kids. That's the what Thorn these are. Birds. But they're like 25 or 30 episode, like V. That was my favorite mini series when I was a kid. Do you remember that really? one? Really? I, I don't think I ever, I remember it was a big Where they thing. were like lizards that yes. came, yeah. So anyway, that's the way it works. Well, with Drama Fever, what they would do is you would actually get to watch it like a week behind Korea. So it, and unlike Netflix where you have to wait a long until time. the whole season is over and then three months later it shows up on Netflix, if it's currently airing in Korea, you get to watch it like the next week. So you're only a week behind the current series. It never worked for us because we want to binge watch I want to binge it. So I'm going to wait and see a series that's like completed. But you would get to see the newest ones instead of something that's like eight years old. So you would know like this is really good because everybody in Korea is enjoying it. Yeah. So I'd love to see him bring it back. Okay, so last one, Slapstick Food Road, which is also Christopher yes, hello, Hittipole. Christopher. We got it. Christopher Hittipole. Uh, it said, I am also hating No Way November. I had a day of almost 4,000 calories, and I have no idea what happened. My birthday, Thanksgiving, and a practice Thanksgiving this month. My measurements are compared to October 15th. I didn't measure at the start of November. I did test my blood after eating queso from a Mexican place since I can't use a scale. <laughs> He's like, I don't think fully clothed with shoes and keys and a wallet is fully cheating. It's not very accurate because I got on the scale at Publix. He said, I have a doctor's appointment next week where I'm sure I'm going to see it. Or you can do like some of the viewers are, which is turn around backwards and say, write it down in my medical file, but don't show me what the weight is. I, I happen to, I'm sorry, I agree with him. If I go to Publix and I get in wearing my leather jacket 
and my jeans, it's not cheating because that's like probably eight pounds off of what I actually wear. But what you're doing is just doing the math in your brain. What if you're, you know, you're I saying- I gotta guess how much my jacket weighs. I know, but like, so how is that even helpful to you? You don't know how accurate it is. Because it would be really cool if I get to Publix and I'm wearing jeans and I've got my wallet and my keys and I've got my coat on and I get on that scale and it's less than I was before with no clothes on. What are the chances that that is what's gonna- It's be? possible. <laughs> You could win the lottery. Sometimes our scale is broken and I get on and it says I only weigh 38 pounds. But how much does that make you excited when you see that? You know it's not true, but it makes you feel good. Oh my gosh. It makes me more stressed out because I'm like, what? who else is lying to me in my life? The worst thing about our scale is it's got this little thing on the back and you can go to like, what is it, ST pounds? <laughs> yeah, like for and, stones. Or kilogram stones, yeah. And every once in a while, the humidity in the bathroom makes it switch automatically. And you get on that scale, and now it's telling you in kilograms. You're like, oh, now I got to switch. Or if it's like, if it's saying, like, you're one stone, like, what does that mean? So, the one thing that I really enjoyed about measuring in this week in particular, not to be like TMI, because this is going to be TMI, I would like to apologize right up front, but. Measuring gives me more of the picture. So this past week, it was like my time of the month. I'm sorry, that's like a lot of information. However, if I would have gotten on the scale with that happening, I, You'd I'm be gonna, yelling at me. I'd be yelling at you. I'm I'm gonna be way up. I'm gonna be upset. I'm gonna be frustrated because it's not what you know. I want to even if it is that time of the month, I want to see the scale going down, which is really unreasonable expectations, right? So instead, by measuring, I saw that there are parts of my body that I'm working out that I am continuing to see like inches go down, all right? So that's showing me that the work that I'm doing is paying off, like I'm having success. Now around my midsection, around my like hips and stuff, that is up, but that is completely Normal. You're bloated. I'm, I'm not doing anything wrong. That is a natural thing. So measuring is telling me the whole story. If I get on the scale and it's just up, that is not telling the whole story about what my week is. I know you're right, especially considering, you know how many times I've seen the scale go down, but my clothes get tighter? And you're like, Which is really upsetting. So then I start to believe that the scale is messed up or it's broken or something's off. And so then I wind up weighing 50 times that day anyway. The scale is always wrong. That's my the answer. Devil. So, Well, that is the end of the comments for this week. So that's the end of this week's Keto on the Couch. So um, again, if you're new to our channel, please leave us some questions, some comments down below. Also, make sure you go over to our Facebook group and uh, join there and leave your stories with pictures and things like that because you never know your story, your pictures, your progress will inspire somebody else. Absolutely. And I know that we still have another week to go, but I wanted to let you know this turkey is super thankful for you. Yeah. Actually, both these turkeys are thankful Absolutely. for you. Absolutely. So, well, that is our video for today. Please do us a favor and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next time. Bye. bye.